Okay, multiple choice. The function shown at right is differentiable at which spot? Remember, differentiable, we can take the derivative, so we'll be looking for cusps, and we'll look, be looking for where the function is um, might not be discontinuous, so we'll be looking for sharp turns. So we're going to look at at x equals negative 2. At x equals negative 2, notice that we do have a hole, so there's a discontinuity, so it cannot be differentiable there. Um, x equals negative 1, and we're looking for where it is, so keyword here, not where it's not. Okay, x equals negative 1. Once again, we've got a hole there, and we've actually got a jump too, so both things makes it not continuous, so it can't be differentiable. Um, x equals 2, so if I go over to x equals 2, there's just a real nice spot. It's continuous there, and everything good is going on. We don't have any sharp turns or anything like that, so see what actually works, so that one checks, but let's see if we have some better answers. Um, x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. Well, we already found that x equals negative 2 was not, so d cannot work. And then let's look at e, x equals 0, just a nice point on the graph on a continuous curve. x equals 2, we already found out is, and x equals 3 would be down here, which is just on an arrow keeping going. So all three of those spots are happening at nice places where the function is continuous and there are no sharp turns. So um, e at x equals 0, x equals 2, and x equals 3 would all be places where the function is differentiable. Number 17, does the function appear to be differentiable? continuous but not differentiable, or neither continuous nor differentiable at x equals 2. So here's x equals 2 right here. And I notice the function is continuous because um, I can, if I go along here, I don't have to pick up my pen to continue on with the graph. So it is continuous. Um, there is a cusp there, which means there is not going to be a place where it's, we can take the derivative. So it is continuous, but it is not differentiable. Okay, number 18, for problems 18 through 20, find the derivative of the following functions at the given value of x, right? Number 18 says 4g of x at x equals 2. We do not need to use a product rule because it does not say 4x, it just says 4. So we're just going to let the 4 tag along. So if I take the derivative, um, 4g of x, the derivative of g is g prime of x. And now we would like to find that at 2, so we're actually going to find 4g prime of 2. So g prime of 2 is... 7, so we're going to do 4 times 7, and that gives me an answer of 28. Okay, number 19. Okay, somehow I lost a slide. I think I'm going to come and do 19 over on this side. Sorry about that. Okay, 19 was 2x squared plus 1g of x. Okay, so this is actually a product. It is one function times another function. So in order to get this answer, I am going to have to use the product rule. So f prime, the derivative of 2x squared plus 1, will be 4x. And the derivative of g, if g of x, the derivative of g of x is g prime of x. All right, so now we're ready to use the product rule. My product rule is f prime times g. So it'll be 4x times g of x plus f times g prime. So 2x squared plus 1 times g prime. All right, and this looks kind of wordy, but... Let's just hang in there here. Now, I know I'm finding it at um, x equals 2. So now we are going to, actually this one said x equals 1, sorry. Okay, so now wherever I see an x, I'm just going to put a 1. So 4 times 1 times g of 1 plus 2 times 1 squared plus 1 times g prime of 1. Now I'm just going to use my chart to fill things in. I'll have 4 times 1 times g of 1 is equal to 5 plus 2 times 1 squared plus 1 will equal 3 times g prime of 1 is equal to negative 1. And I'll just continue to work things out. I'll have 20 minus 3, and that gives me an answer of 17. Right, and then number 20 says g of x over x. So I notice that I see a quotient, so I do need to use the quotient rule. So here's f, here's g. f prime will equal the derivative of g of x, which will be g prime of x. And then g prime, the derivative of x, will be 1. Okay, and if this is confusing you with all these f's and g's, I've seen some people very nicely using u and v, and that seems to work just fine. So if you want to do that, go ahead. All right, quotient rule, f prime times g. So g prime of x times x minus f times g prime. So g of x times 1 all over g squared, so all over x squared. All right, and just like I did in number 19, Wherever we see an x, we're going to put the value in. So at x equals 2, so I'll put g prime of 2 times 2 minus g of 2 times 1 all over 2 squared. Okay, g prime of 2 using the chart is equal to 7 times 2. 
minus g of 2 is equal to negative 8 times 1, and then all over 2 squared is 4. So this ends up giving me 14 plus 8 over 4, which is 22 over 4, which you could leave like that, or if you did reduce it, it would be 11 halves.